topic is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and we're talking to the president of the NAACP, uh, Reverend Vernon Dixon. And of course, Reverend Dixon, before we had our uh, commercial break, we promised that we would give you an opportunity to uh, talk about the uh, NAACP. Let's talk about the structure of that organization. I think you've already mentioned the fact that uh, this is only a branch and that you are uh, you have branches all over the nation. Let's talk about how all of those uh, branches come together and uh, what you're able to achieve through the uh, structure that you have. The NAACP is a membership organization and our work is accomplished through our committees. Uh, it is our committee structure that is, in, is important to uh, the success that the uh, national organization has had over the years. We have 18 standing committees uh, which cover a wide range of issues and give people a lot of opportunities to be able to come in and mm -hmm. to focus. Uh, our agenda is really set by the national office mm -hmm. uh, that meets uh, once a year in a national convention mm -hmm. where resolutions are brought forth and put forth the agenda. Uh, when I look at the agenda for this year, mm -hmm. certainly issues around voting uh, continue to be at the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, our economic condition within the country mm -hmm. and how uh, the impact of the war has taken place. Mm -hmm. Education mm -hmm. continues to be a major mm -hmm. initiative of, uh, of the branches that all across the country mm -hmm. as we continue to try to find ways to make uh, access for persons of mm -hmm. color, or children of color and their families uh, to get the quality education. Mm -hmm. um, a new issue that has been coming up and has certainly been in the mm -hmm. news in this area is environmental racism, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. where we're looking at the dump sites and chemicals that have been uh, left in uh, poor communities. So our agenda is set by the national office and then comes down through our regional and ultimately through the state conventions, uh, passing down then to the local branches. Local branches still have an opportunity, though, mm -hmm. to uh, set their own agenda and address issues because uh, we're in the community and all communities are different. Mm -hmm. uh, the issues, while there are issues like education and where we have common uh, concerns, uh, mm -hmm. in this area, one of the issues that we've been looking at is issues of disparity, mm -hmm. uh, particularly mm -hmm. as it relates to health, health. disparity mm -hmm. and economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, conditions within uh, this community. Um, Currently, the Nashville branch uh, is very active in our education and looking at what um, uh, we are five years. We're in the fifth year, the end of the desegregation plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing to monitor uh, the conditions within our school systems. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those who are concerned and feel as though our schools are beginning to resegregate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking at ways to uh, keep that from happening mm -hmm. and trying to also find ways to enhance the student achievement. Mm -hmm. So that's a very active uh, mm -hmm. issue for us. Uh, the other issues around health, uh, mm -hmm. we're looking at as a part of the national agenda, but in this particular area, uh, concerns around environmental issues mm -hmm. uh, as to how it affects uh, poor people. And a lot of our attention uh, and efforts have been around Mahara General uh, mm -hmm. because a number of people in our community are there and how we look at issues of funding mm -hmm. and how we gain access and, and, and mm -hmm. what's happening in those particular areas. Um, Another area that uh, we have uh, been spending mm -hmm. uh, uh, some time and discussion on uh, in the community um, has also been just to overall access okay. uh, mm -hmm. of persons of color and how it is that we educate people in the community uh, as to the issues and, and, and to make sure that we continue mm -hmm. to be at the mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. um, we have reactivated on our college campuses mm -hmm. uh, in the community, uh, college campuses uh, at, at Fisk and TSU, uh, mm -hmm. chapters there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have got our youth uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, committee back up. We're working now and putting our AXO program together, which is mm -hmm. a training area for mm -hmm. youth uh, to, make, uh, to prepare them for college and higher education. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of great and exciting things that are taking place at the branch. Uh, but it does center, first mm -hmm. of all, in membership. In membership, and very good. We, mm -hmm. uh, we will be having, um, in October, our annual mm -hmm. Radiothon, mm -hmm. uh, where we'll be recruiting members to come in. We're trying to make sure that our office is ready to receive mm -hmm. people uh, who are coming. We're doing a great job, I think, uh, in the branch now mm -hmm. in making sure that the memberships that come in are, are processed in a good way. Uh, 
Um, I'm very fortunate to have mm -hmm. a, um, a great supporting uh, representation in that branch. Um, and if I might, I'd just like to single out a few Good, people okay. who have been mm -hmm. uh, elected. The Reverend Mark Freeman is the first vice president and is also working very hard with our religious affairs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Blondell Strong, Dr. Blondell Strong is the second vice president and she really is coordinating our mm -hmm. volunteer efforts in the office and making sure that our office is staffed and how we handle. Uh, James Barnett, who is the third vice president, has been heading mm -hmm. up our personnel committee as we move uh, to put staff in the office. We haven't had staff in the office in a couple mm -hmm. of years and, and I'm really excited about being able to, you know, to have the mm -hmm. staff, have the office staffed full time. Uh, our secretary is Margaret Scrivens, uh, who handles uh, uh, most mm -hmm. of the work in Good. the branch mm -hmm. as far as getting the memberships and getting out notices and letting people go. Uh, and she's assisted by uh, Miss Sandra Hunter and mm -hmm. Tim Ayers is our treasurer, mm -hmm. and he's assisted uh, uh, also uh, mm -hmm. by uh, um, uh, Mr. Hunter. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is. Um, so we have some good people uh, in place. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we still need uh, uh, other people involved. Our religious affairs mm -hmm. has really taken on initiative. A backbone of the NAACP has always been uh, the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are reaching out and trying to get more churches involved and helping us in to disseminate uh, the information that is out there. Uh, but there's still room mm -hmm. uh, for people who want to come and who want to work uh, in our, our structure. Mm -hmm. People have to remember, though, uh, that we are not really a program agency. We are mm -hmm. more of an advocacy and, and a, a group uh, that does monitoring. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, you know, with our legal redress that there are a group of uh, lawyers that are sitting mm -hmm. in that they can come in uh, and, and find a lawyer. What we do is we refer uh, to people and let mm -hmm. people know. And we, uh, our legal redress committee works hard to make sure that they're up on the issues and mm -hmm. keeping a database of attorneys uh, who might be able to address the other issues. Mm -hmm. um, I have taken upon uh, one of the things that I've tried to do is also to uh, enhance the other organizations within this community mm -hmm. uh, that we can do collaborative efforts with mm -hmm. uh, who may have some resources that, that we don't have but who uh, still are concerned about issues around civil rights. Very good. You know, and, and of course we're getting ready for this uh, second commercial break, but when we come back let's talk about uh, the uh, membership of the organization and what people might be able to do in order to assist you. Of course, we'll be back with our audience uh, following this very, very short commercial break. The topic is...